Oh good, I'm glad you're here. I need to tell you a story of access blocking. There was a time at my school when even the term anime was blocked from a Google search. Students could not access websites like DeviantArt or other resources to search for inspiration on their favorite art form. So what does it say to a learner when their interests are blocked from them at school? Does it say that their interests are wrong and bad? Yes, it does, because that's how they respond when they find that what they like, what they are interested in and care about, is not accessible from school, even though it is not inherently inappropriate. Students also find this with social media sites. There's so much potential lost when education refuses to reach learners where they are, which is on social media sites, having fun and learning at the same time. We have a lot of potential to access that, but we don't use it. I have been told that the reason is from public concern and pressure and state concern and pressure to protect students from potentially harmful internet resources. And while I definitely don't want to expose students to dangerous websites, I think that this kind of practice is harmful to learners in that it limits their resources, it limits their opportunity to learn digital citizenship and information literacy, and I think it's especially harmful to low-income learners that may not have access to Wi-Fi and additional resources outside of school to be able to learn some of these lessons in an environment that allows them to make choices and sometimes make mistakes and to discern good resources from bad instead of the opinion that I see students get when so many resources are blocked. They only determine a good resource versus a bad resource on whether it's accessible from school or not. So if it's blocked, it must be bad, and if it's an open resource, it must be good. And um, they are not getting the opportunity to really discern for themselves what a good resource looks like and what requirements need to be met because they're having those decisions made for them by computers. Um, I think this also limits the freedom of choice. While I definitely see that given choice, all learners may or may not choose to use the resources productively, when they are restricted from that freedom of choice, they don't have an option. They can only use the resources that they can access, whether they're quality resources or not. And I think that this is a problem that needs to be addressed, and we need to find more of a happy medium where educators are being allowed to make decisions on um, restriction and, and or at least be involved in those decisions instead of it being made um, by people who are not directly in the classroom and not directly working and interacting with the learners. And the learners should be involved in discerning the good resources from the bad and making some of those decisions themselves.